But if you'll listen to me for just a few moments. Hey guys, DJ Slink here with another tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about acapellas, uh, where to find acapellas, um, and also how to make your own acapellas. Uh, I'm really excited about this tutorial because I think um, I, I thought a lot of people knew how to do this, um, but there there is several techniques. So I'm going to try and show you as best I can how to do it. Um, so firstly, like what is an acapella? Well, it's just the uh, the lyrics of a song without any um, of the backing track in there. So why would you want an acapella? A lot of people like to use acapellas in mashups and uh, just in bootleg remixes and whatnot, samples. And it's it's just really fun to even DJ with an acapella. You know, maybe you have a spare of the moment idea where you just want to chuck some Beastie Boys or some Fat Man Scoop or something over the top of whatever you happen to be playing. So it's pretty fun DJing and, and producing with acapellas. So where do you get them? Well, uh, a good place to get them is from acapellasforyou.co.uk. Uh, acapellasforyou.co.uk. Yeah. And uh, this site is really awesome. You can literally just uh, sign up <coughs> and type in whatever you want. Beastie Boys. And there you go. There's, there's a list. Um, most aren't that great quality, but you can find a 320 here and there. Um, so yeah, it's a good place to find them. Um, what happens if you if you can't find an acapella that you want? Like uh, I was looking for a big cap acapella recently. There is one here, but that's not the one I was looking for. Um, so what you have to do in that case is just track down the record that it, the acapella originally comes from and uh, I found it here on Discogs. Discogs.com is a great site to find um, pretty much any record that you might be looking for. Um, so yeah, you can see the acapella here uh, for sale and there's 16 of them for sale. <coughs> you can just order it. Yeah, it, I mean, if you're a big vinyl lover then this is like awesome. You probably already have most of the acapellas on vinyl, but um, it's it's kind of annoying sometimes when you have a great idea for a <laughs> for a tune and a mashup and then you've got to wait three weeks for a record to be delivered. So not the most ideal. I, I always look on acapellas for you first. Um, so how do you make your own acapellas? Well, you can use a technique called phase inversion. So what that involves is using the instrumental of a song and the original mix of a song and inverting one of them so that it cancels out um, all of the instrumental music or the backing track if you like and you're left with just the acapella, just the vocals. So uh, I went on Beatport and bought this pair of tunes here, they're both WAV files. It's uh, RDX and Dread Squad with uh, their song Smoker and it's a perfect example to show you how to make a acapella so let's get started. <clears throat> so I'm going to drag in the waves here Oops, and uh, I can actually just hold control to drop them both on a channel each. If I let go of control it puts them in a line so that's kind of a little handy trick. Um, and I'm going to turn the warping off for both of these tunes and just make sure that this marker is set all the way to the left so that they both start simultaneously. And If I zoom in you can, I can see that they're both going to literally start to the wave exactly at the same position. Zooming back out, um, on the instrumental channel, I have a utility with both of these little buttons here um, clicked, and this is the phase left and phase right button, and what that will do is essentially invert the signal of the instrumental. Um, so to demonstrate that, I'll just uh, take a quick recording of the beginning of this song. RDX and Dread Squad, make we get a 10 band. I just realized I've got the instrumental on the top. Uh, I'll just I'll flip them around just for uh, consistency here. Okay. Cool. So down in here, I just I've just taken a recording of the inverted signal. And if I zoom right in, look at this. This is definitive. You can see this goes way up here. This is the very first sound in the in the song and our recorded version is the exact kind of flipped mirror image, if you will, of, of this. Um, so if I play this and this at the same time, 
um, what you'll hear is nothing. You'll hear silence. And, and then it just becomes a kind of spot the difference type of situation where you, I've got words up here and no words down here and it's only um, silencing the backing track and what you're left with is an acapella. So let's check it out. We are smoker, them a joker. We are la viva loca. We the a great don't give me. Just like magic. And if I mute this channel here. We are smoker, them a joker. We are la viva loca. I am a smoker, them a joker. We are smoker, them a joker. It's like magic. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> cool. So this is best case scenario. I've got the waves. Um, now the waves. Uh, you know, a full quality wave and an instrumental and the original mix aren't always for sale. So, um, you know, I got lucky in this case. J uh, just a quick um, note, I've made a pair of shitty sounding 128 kilobyte per second MP3s. Um, I made them out of the, out of the waves, so <clears throat> just to compare the difference in quality. So let's listen to just just listen to how much you can hear of the backing track because it's not perfect, but um, you can definitely hear a, a lot more in the 128s compared to the waves. So this is the waves. Yeah, like you can definitely hear a lot more sort of garbly nonsense going on in the background. So it's ideal to get the waves if you can. Cool. So I've got another example for you. Uh, this is a Debrat tune that I've um, been wanting to make an acapella out of. And if I just flip these around. So I've got the original at the top here. Let's have a look, little listen. Oh, I'll turn warping off. That's very fast. Okay, there we go. Just skip into where the vocals are. Cool. I'll just delete the other side of this. Um, and we can just kind of focus on uh, the vocal part here. Now, these two, ver this t the two versions of this song were recorded off of a vinyl. And that is not a good thing when we're trying to make an acapella. There's all kinds of, um, you know, variances in how it was recorded into its digital form, what needles were used, whether the platter was spinning perfectly, whether that record is perfectly clean, and whether it was pressed correctly and, and uh, precisely in the first place. Um, any one of those things doesn't go right, and you're going to have a... <laughs> you're going to have no chance of making an acapella, unless... We, we can kind of bodge it a little bit here. So, let's get into it. Um, so this is the, you can see already, like this is not quite lined up with this. So our first step here would probably be to just zoom in enough so that we can eyeball like each kind of wave little notch and stuff and zoom into this one and we can just kind of slide it over and line it up. Just eyeball it. <clears throat> that looks pretty good to me. Um, and we can zoom out and we'll actually turn warping back on for the instrumental and we'll set the warping algorithm to, to re-pitch so what this will sort of simulate is as if the like as if we're playing this track on a record player and moving the pitch up slightly um, so yeah like if if we sort of take a you know a, a random arbitrary trunk like this you know, over here we can already see it's gone out of sync again. Actually, let's just listen to what it sounds like for now. Yeah, so you can hear it's sort of, it worked here a little bit and then it, it um, dropped out of phase and you can even hear that cool phasing effect there. Um, but it dropped out of phase and we're left with the beat coming back in and it doesn't sound like an acapella at all. So if we zoom in here, you know, just uh, somewhere a little bit further along. And <clears throat> try and, you know, kick it back into sync again. We will have a better shot at creating an acapella. So I'll just, I'm just, I just created a warp marker anywhere, really. 
and I'm just moving, just eyeballing it. I'm going to really try and get it as close as I can get. So I might try and eyeball this little notch here up to this notch here. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'll do my best anyway. Might zoom in a little bit down here so I can move it a bit more precisely. And I don't know, that looks about good to me. So let's zoom back out and play it from the beginning and see what we get. I might even play with this warp marker while it's playing to see if I can get it any closer. Just just by listening. Right, so you could sort of hear it as I as I push this marker to the to the right, you could sort of hear it coming back into phase and um, cancelling all the audio out properly but you know it's very tough to keep it in phase and what I'm gonna have to do to make this acapella work is go through all the way along the song and just add as many warp markers as I can and just listen and try and kick it into phase um, and you know this could take hours and hours to get it as close as possible but really that's the only option when you're left with um, you know music recorded from vinyls you're better off buying a CD off of Discogs and then, you know, ripping the CD to WAV files. But I don't think this record came on CD. I think it I think you can only get the instrumental and the, the remix on vinyl. So anyway, these this is the the two pieces of audio that I tried to make an a cappella out of. And I did make it work. Um, it just took a long time. <laughs> so in the next part to this video, part two, I'm going to show you another technique which, um, for, yeah, it's a different technique. Um, I'm really excited about this technique because I only discovered it um, just recently. So um, I'll see you in the next video guys. I hope you enjoyed the, this video and I hope you guys learned something. And yeah, if you got any questions or you know, you just want to say what's up then just leave a comment and cool, have a great day. Peace out.